Coming to Centennial really helped me discover my different identities to discover what I, what I valued to me. It taught me a lot about diversity and inclusion and what it means to become a global citizen. It really opened up my mind to stepping out of my comfort zone and trying new things. Um, I got to experience a lot of amazing things here at Centennial and it was the first time I really felt like I belonged to something bigger than myself. I think having a sense of belonging at Centennial is really important to me because people need to be able to bring their whole selves into the space. Being able to come into a space and being respected, being able to bring all your identities and complex experiences and feeling safe, welcome and heard and represented. Being here at the college is very uh, congruent with kind of who I am and, and kind of my beliefs and core values. The fact that I can be myself. Like I've, I've, you know, I have a picture of my husband on my desk. I have a pride flag in my office. And I've never had to check myself if that's okay or worry if someone else is gonna judge me for that. It's like, go for it. I have a beard and a turban. I'm a Sikh uh, with my culture, but many students that don't know why I wear a turban, uh, why, I, why I do have my beard. Uh, so giving that knowledge and information so that as a part of Centennial, if, if we can bring this awareness to students like in their classrooms, makes inclusive environment. Coming from the perspective of an Indigenous educator and somebody who's really focused on that in my career, it's really important to me to have a sense of belonging for myself and also to create that for my students in the classroom. It's really important to create an environment where everybody feels like they belong and can contribute something. I came to Centennial as a student, but now I am graduating as a professional. The love, the respect uh, that I've felt has really shaped me, shaped my attitudes, my values. It's definitely reaffirming that I belong at Centennial and that I'm welcome here and I am welcome to be different. I'm welcome to share my opinions and to share my differences. And I serve a purpose and I have a role within this community. I belong. I belong. I belong. I belong. I belong. I belong. Think of a place. A place you want to be. A place you belong. It's a step up, a step forward, a statement, a strategy. It's where dreams take flight. Where the fire burns hot. More than 50 years strong, but built for today. Focus on the horizon of tomorrow. Inclusion, equity, citizenship, the real world and our world. We think harder, reach higher, live local, study global. We unlock doors and change the direction of our minds. Education without borders, global citizenship, equity and social inclusion are the values. From hundreds of cultures and 80 languages, we stand together, focus on a stronger future. We live to laugh, we love to play, we rise with the sun and reach for the stars. From court case to aerospace, searching and researching, we break the mold and find a better way. It's a commitment to ourselves and a promise to others. Centennial, you belong. Think of a place. Dear viewers, uh, good, good evening to you all and assalamu alaikum. First of all, I would like to welcome you on uh, this today's live session with Centennial College, one of our uh, partner school, uh, post-secondary school in Canada, uh, based in Ontario and especially in Toronto. So today we have a very special guest with us, uh, Mr. Bipin with us uh, from Centennial College. But before uh, introducing him, I just want to tell you that uh, if you're watching this live session, please uh, don't forget to share this live session in your timeline. 
so this will be a very good discussion definitely about centennial college about all the details about this college about this fantastic public college in based in toronto so bipin can you hear me yes very well thanks sir thank you thank you so much for your joining and uh, if you if you if, would you mind to introduce yourself to the viewers sure sir then before i can introduce myself i should say the really well executed uh, the beginning the two videos were really impressive i think the, the first video which says i belong it shows the kind of diversity of students we have within the camp within the college the second video which says you belong it shows the diversity of programs we have in the college so very well executed thanks sir Hi, uh, good evening, Bangladesh, and thank you very much for your time. You know, uh, uh, I can say that it's evening, almost evening. You might be planning to go out after after your stressful day. So, thanks again for joining this session. And just to introduce myself, my name is Bipin Nalinda. I represent Centennial College for some of the South Asian countries, and uh, I have been associated for more than two years with Centennial College, and it's been a great journey. Thank you so much, Bipin, for wonderful introduction. So. Dear viewers, uh, you know that Centennial College it's a public college and it's the first public college based in Ontario, and the location is really attractive since you you people are looking for the Toronto city, so Centennial is just in Toronto, so it's a it's a good college and they have a lot of programs. Definitely, we'll discuss one by one. But uh, if you're watching this live session, please uh, don't forget to share this live session in your timeline. And if you have any question regarding any any program or anything about Centennial College uh, and any anything about application process, program fees. Anything, yeah, about Centennial College, you, are, you just feel free to ask on live, and we'll be happy uh, to answer your all question. And already we have started taking applications for Fall 21, and uh, the most exciting part of Centennial College is that your application fee is free uh, if you apply through Prominent Council, which is a very exciting part of uh, Centennial College. So you can apply uh, without any application fees. And they're very, very, very good programs. They have definitely will be discussing uh, with Bipin. So Bipin, uh, first of all, uh, you know that uh, last, last since last uh, year, from March 2020 or like some beginning of 2020, we have been passing a very challenges, pre challenging periods. Like uh, students are unable to, uh, you know, that do the physical classes and all these things. They are doing online class, which is the first experience in student life that they are not able to you know that experience the you know, real time uh, experience in canada and they are still in uh, in home and they are uh, started they have started online uh, so i mean uh, it's a, it's a very you know that uh, we are very it's very unfortunate that we are having this kind of challenges so how do you uh, feel about it and uh, how is going to be happen in september 21 uh, since students are really eager to start their physical classes from uh, fall 21. Yeah. So what's the progress and what's the update about it in Ontario? Sure. Sayed, so, before I can get into the part where I can confirm about the September 2021 intake mode, delivery mode, I would like to give a phrase, you know, it's the toughest time when the, when the best comes out. And I can say that when we say very proudly that Centennial was the first public funded college in Ontario, that means we were the pioneers. And when it comes to the pandemic situation, I think we were the one of those first colleges, I can say that, who came up with the online program to ensure the study is not on hold for the students. That's one thing. Now, as you know that during pandemic, when other destinations like international destination for education were struggling to cope up with the, the immigration policies and also to support the international student, I think Canada was one of those countries which, you know, came in front, even the government came in front and went giving some relief fund for the international students, almost $500 per week was credited into the student's account. It shows that Canada is one of the best destinations for the international students and it's one of the safest. They feel home away from home, I can say. That's one of the best examples of uh, Canada. I can say that how they support and respect the international student and understand what they go through when there is some situation like, you know, the, the pandemic around the world. Similarly, uh, I can say that, uh, you know, uh, uh, during this September 2021, uh, from May 2020, all the programs were online. In September, there were some programs which were hybrid. In January, most of the programs were online. If I really want to confirm what will be the delivery mode in September, I can say that it depends on how the real-time situation will be in September. Now, the, as a college, we all are hoping that it should be a campus, you know, delivery mode 
but it also depends on the public health ministry's approval whether they allow us to open the campus or not having said that we are positive that it might be campus itself but we cannot confirm it all depends on the real time situation uh, in, uh, to add on our most of the programs which are uh, wherein the lab is necessity we are running the hybrid model even now and the same will definitely continue but it's only for the theoretical aspect where the online program might continue if the pandemic situation doesn't go down uh, however having said that it should not impact the student in terms of you know they traveling to canada so even if they choose an online program they can always travel to canada if they get the visa so there is no issues with visa approval just because the programs are delivered online that that has to be clear with the student exactly exactly and, and i think uh, we should uh, i think you should tell also something about that uh, as you know that students are doing have been doing the online classes since last one year uh, and, and how is your experience with the students that are they feeling comfortable or are they happy are they satisfied with this kind of online classes since uh, there could be some confusion that whether they are learning properly or not whether uh, how how is their satisfaction level would you please say something about this man okay so say so to give you that information uh, we have enrolled n numbers of students for this online program for may intake like even though i cannot say that we had a complete set of strength for the may september intake but we have had a very good number of student enrolling for the online program of course there will be certain issues for certain student but most of them were very well satisfied i will tell you the reason the benefits of going for online program during this pandemic one is the flexibility of time so all the sessions even if it is a live session those sessions are recorded and students will have access to go through the recorded session and complete their curriculum during their flexible time zone that's one second being in your hometown you are able to you know complete the semesters and still be eligible for your post study work permit which is a great advantage and you can save a lot of money in terms of your cost of living third there is a 24 by 7 helpline center to help the student it might be through chat it might be through email it might be through and we are also ask you know helping student with a free tutor service they can enroll for the free tutor ship so there are many lots of benefit for online program so i don't see there is any issues and in fact when they face any issues where they don't understand certain aspects from the online delivery mode they can always reach out to the faculty the faculties are sharing their email addresses with the students so that they can reach out to them directly so i don't see any challenges if students are facing certain issues like internet where they are unable to see the live classes the streaming is not very clear but as i said they always have an option to download the session and they can view it later so i i find that the program is a blessing in disguise for the students the benefit it has for the students but i think that uh, there could be some uh, some limitations still because uh, you know the students are going to canada to Uh, to have the experience of the you know that the industrial attachment or they want to you know that uh, study that canada is the best for the experiential learning so why it's because uh, you know that uh, they can what they can do by uh, they can learn by doing i mean in practically so i think this is the only only limitations uh, through online classes so i hope yes. that this this should be resolved very soon and uh, yes i agree and, uh, exactly exactly so uh, now bipin let's uh, come to the point of centennial college uh, you know that there are a lot of colleges based in ontario in toronto also there are a few colleges based in toronto so i mean we know that centennial is one of the uh, the, the the first public uh, funded college in uh, ontario i mean ontario so uh, how do you uh, tell about uh, how, how in, in your prospect that uh, how is centennial college and why people should consider centennial college as their study destination what are the key points uh, to study there okay sayed if you are asking a mother a question that how is your son definitely the mother will always say my son is the best so if you are asking the person who represent centennial college i will always say centennial is the best but more than that i will give certain facts for the audience or for the students to understand why we say centennial is one of the best centennial college as you are saying that it is one of the first public funded college in ontario now let's talk about the location we are based in scarborough which is in toronto and it's 30 to 40 minutes away from downtown toronto that means your cost of living is quite reasonable you have a lot of job opportunities around the campus itself like in scarborough there are a lot of things a lot of job opportunity for the students so you're not far away from your respective jobs and also at the same time you're not living in a very expensive place suppose if you are looking for any downtown 
colleges that you know your uh, cost of living also increases the rent also increases so I, i can when i talk about the location of the college it's one of the best now let's co- talk about the college itself we have five campuses and two learning sites that's great now apart from that we have a strength of almost 23000 full time full time students and 19000 part time students and out of those 23000 full time students 12000 student approximately are international that means more than 50% of the students are international within that international student i can say we have students coming from almost 126 countries so you can imagine the kind of diversity we have now how many colleges in ontario providing 160 plus programs to the international student we are one of those now we have programs across business school business transportation engineering and you know uh, hospitality communication and media arts design and health studies so huge range of variety for the student to choose from and i can say we are also one of those most affordable fee we also have one of the most affordable fee structures and we are not charging any application fees so that means and uh, you know when you when you come across the college you can also see in our website when we have a satisfaction survey through the students in most of the factors like even if it is faculty campus we stand about 90 92% which itself shows that you know the student services is one of the best uh, highest priority we give so from these facts students can definitely make out why centennial exactly exactly and definitely the courses i have seen that is very fantastic program you do offer i mean lot of programs engineering business and arts uh, and uh, so many programs hands on experience uh, uh, kind of programs that you are offering so uh, and tuition fees also i have seen i i can understand that it's, it's quite affordable since it's in toronto so in that in that sense it's it's not so high the tuition fees uh so uh, the thing is that uh, there are some uh, i i would i would like to say one thing that uh, uh, that uh, during travel to canada now at this moment so the students should follow some instructions uh, like uh, after arrival so if you could say something about these instructions because this is going to be very helpful to them since some students they are planning to uh, travel canada very soon and so what what should be the guideline for them okay so this is something which there are a lot of guidelines and i i think we can spend the entire session explaining the guideline but i can give a very easy resolution to all the students that there is the first 3 days after your arrival in canada there is a compulsory you know quarantine which is from the government after that there are certain process now students will have queries does college help you uh, help us in any quarantine process is college helping in terms of funding for the testings so what you can do is we have a very specialized team to answer all your questions and also prepare you in terms of travel to canada the email address i will uh, ping to sayed who can post it in the website it is registration at centennialcollege.ca and another email address is sage that is c oh, sorry s a g e at centennialcollege.ca you can write an email after your registration for a respective intake and they will guide you you need to fill up certain forms and after you fill up certain form the guidelines will come from the team and also you will get a support letter from the college uh, just to remind you support letter is not mandatory but if you have it it will have all the details on your you know what to do and what are the don'ts everything for you to have a better and a smooth transit to canada i think there are few uh, requirements or guidelines for them that they need to stay 3 days in hotel government registered hotel and they need to book the hotels before they fly Yep. and uh, i think they should have the 14 days quarantine plan uh, before they arrive and also there is some apps i think they should uh, install that can arrive so dear students apnara jara recently samne jara kan to fly korben obosshoi apnara guideline gulo obosshoi dekhe niben kichu certain rules regulations ache jemon apni okhane jawar pore 3 din apni government registered hotel e thakte hobe ebong shei hotel ti apni ekhan theke book korte hobe ebong there is some certain cost about for it এবং আইটো হচ্ছে আপনি আপনার যদি কোনো কোভিড টেস্ট নেগেটিভ আসে দেন আপনি অবশ্যই আপনার আপনার মত করে যে কোয়ারেন্টাইন প্ল্যান করেছেন ইউ ক্যান গো ফর ইট পজিটিভ আসলে দেন देयर শুড বি সাম अदर ডিসিশন এবং যেটা হচ্ছে যে আপনার ওখানে কোয়ারেন্টাইন প্ল্যান শেষ করার পরে ডিউরিং কোয়ারেন্টাইন প্ল্যান ইউ हैव টু মেইনটেইন অল দ্য রুলস এন্ড রেগুলেশনস এন্ড আফটার হ্যাভিং ইওর কোয়ারেন্টাইন প্ল্যান দেন ইউ ক্যান মেইনটেইনিং দ্য अदर রুলস এন্ড রেগুলেশনস ইউ ক্যান uh you can take care of yourself in that way so this is the thing you need to check uh, the immigration website as well everything is mentioned over there and still if you have any doubts 
please feel free to um, uh, contact with prominent consultant and we, we can help you out in this matter so uh Bipin, actually now we'd like, we would like to talk about the programs that you offer so Centennial College actually they offer uh, undergrad programs and also the postgrad program. In undergrad level, you have two or three kind of program courses like diploma, advanced diploma, and also the bachelor. I think some programs you are offering uh, in bachelor level yeah. and also the postgraduate graduate certificate program. So if you could say something about all your programs uh, shortly, and of course uh, the entry requirements. Uh, and the uh, tuition fees structure, IELTS requirement, and dueling, and all these things, if you could say shortly. Sure. So, Sayed, I'll start with the entry requirement and then I will move on to the number of kind of programs we are offering. So, the entry requirement, I can divide it into two sections. One is at a post secondary level. When I say post secondary level, it is for the students who are 10 plus 2, that is the high school pass, or after the 10th, if they have done a three years of diploma for those students, there's a different eligibility criteria. Let's discuss about the post-secondary level. In terms of for I, you should have an overall six and two bands with 5.5 is acceptable. And at the same time, Duolingo should be 105 and above. And there we also accept PT and TOEFL for which you can see that, you know, the, the details in our website, like PT about 51 and TOEFL, I think it's about 63. You can check the details in our website. When it comes to academic score, it should be 50% and above. A minimum of 50% is quite necessary for you to apply with us. Uh, in terms, if you have done a three years of diploma after your 10th, then the number of backlogs cannot be more than five. At the same time, your education gap cannot be more than five years. And uh, when I say education gap, not more than five years, means after your high school, if you are more than five years, and if, even if you if the work experience, you cannot apply with us. Certain students will have queries like my last semester is pending, my IELTS are not yet you know, received, can I apply? So unfortunately, we don't accept the incomplete document. And that means we are not issuing any conditional offer letter. The complete set of document is quite necessary for you to apply with us. Of course, there is a point that we are not charging any application fees and we try to honor the application if it is valid within seven working days. That means the offer letters is re are released usually within seven working days. Now, this is for the post-secondary level. When it comes to postgraduate, or we also have certain program called as fast track. I'll explain in detail what do you mean by fast track program. For these, your overall aisle should be 6.5, no band less than 6. And your education gap cannot be more than 10 years. The backlogs cannot be more than 10. And your academic percentage should be 50% and above. So these are the basic requirements. And in case if you don't have aisles and you have to give your Duolingo, it should be 125 and above. So these are the requirements. Now, we also have two programs, which is in the bachelor's degree program and the bachelor's of IT and one, another one is bachelor's of public relation. Here, the percentage should be 60% and above and your aisle should be 6.5, no band less than 6. And the academic and uh, uh, in terms of your education gap, it should not be more than 5 years and the backlog should not be more than 10. So these are some of the basic requirements. Uh, coming to kinds of program we offer. We have a huge you know, uh, number of programs to offer both at undergraduate and at a postgraduate level. Uh, like we at an undergraduate level, if you want to specialize in finance, we have finance, marketing, we have marketing. When it comes to uh, you know uh, community services, we have development service workers, uh, child and youth care. And we, in terms of engineering, we have biotechnology, we have uh, you know, IT related programs and at the same time, architectural technology, journalism. So in the school of transportation, we have aviation programs. So I, I can I can say that we have more than 50 to 60 programs to offer at the post secondary level. Coming to postgraduate level, again, we have a huge variation, uh, variations of program under the business school, like global business management, international business management, financial planning, then television, films and business management, fashion management. And then we have hospitality uh, and resource management. Now, these are some of the program coming to fast track, which I said, you know, I will explain to you what is the fast track program. So we have a diploma and advanced diploma program for bachelor student, the students who completed the bachelor's or say even masters. If they're looking for hands on experience, we have the fast track, fast track program, which are like why we call this fast track, because if you have completed your bachelor's or engineering, you can enter into this program directly in the third semester. You will skip the first year of study, the basic studies. And if you're taking an advanced diploma through fast track, and if you are a good performer, you can get a co-op option. Now, co-op plays a very important role for students to give a hands-on experience with 
a full time employer that means we have industry partners who can give you job opportunities and these full time employers by the time you finish the program you can very proudly say that you know you have 8 months of experience with a full time employer and they pay you during your you know uh, internship so these are some of the very uh, i can say uh, brief explanations about the programs and the eligibility criteria but we have prominent for you if you are looking for more details and this particular session may not be able to cover all the details you can reach out to sir exactly exactly and dear viewers or dear students that uh, yes centennial has lot of programs ebong ami jeta bolbo je tader undergrad diploma jeta hocche ontario college diploma these are for two years program advanced diploma is a three years program post grad diplomas are one year program fast track it's sometimes it's one year sometimes in some cases it's two years so every year you have uh, two semesters Uh, so th this is the how the programs are designed, and you can see uh, check the website uh, in website every details are there, and definitely you can contact prominent consultant. That you need to check that whether programs are open or not. It's very important be before applying. After that, go obviously check for the whether program is open. Actually, na jeda ma sent the other partner, so we can help you out in this matter. So uh, Bipin, uh, actually we know that uh, the your post grad diplomas are mostly the graduates are mostly a one year program except global business management. So students are really you know that uh, now uh, people has their concept a common concept you know that better especially in Bangladesh market since uh, for India and other market is fine but in Bangladesh market people concept is that if I go for a one year program may, I may not get a visa or I may not get a PR I mean I cannot apply I may I may not apply for a PR. or i may not get a, a good job or something like that they have this kind of misconception so they always prefer either two years program or one plus one since some colleges they have they are they have they have started offering one plus on the bundled offer so uh, how is your post graduate diploma as uh, designed and uh, if students can uh, can they choose the two programs combinedly with the uh, same time is it possible one after so, another Yes, sir. So it's not the problem only with Bangladesh. Most of the South Asian countries they look for two-year program. The only reason is the post-study work permit is up to three years. If you have a two years of study, uh, you know, tenure in Canada, and that's a common understanding. And at the same time, just to give a small history, usually a postgraduate diploma is was earlier of one year, but slowly as day passed, as the immigration policies were updated, the one year program where sometimes stretched to two years with a lot of inputs like internship placements and other options co op options so there are very few program which are two year but usually a postgraduate diploma is one year tenure or a certificate is one year tenure we do have two programs in fact global business management and business analytics however business analytics is almost full for september intake and it might open only for the next may when i say may 2022 what are the benefits of doing a 1 plus 1 so we have program which we can offer 1 plus 1 but at the same time just to confirm we release offer letter for the first program and the second program can be chosen can be uh, 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 can be taken by the student when they are continuing with the first program so after first semester they can inform the college and they will reserve the seat for the second year program now the benefit of doing a 1 plus 1 program is student gets two specialization that means when they are looking for a job they can widen their career aspects that's a benefit of the student which students normally don't understand i'll just give a small uh, you know uh, example now suppose some student after completing their graduation is looking for a supply chain management which is a one year program after doing one year program of supply chain management they can go for another one year of say international business management or marketing management which goes hands on you know which goes side by side very well so when they are looking for a job they have two specialization certificate in their hand that means an employer will also see that person with with a little upgrade saying that this person has specialized from two different courses so that's a kind of add on which student will have when they choose a 1 plus 1 Okay, okay. So, but but I, I just need to know that, as you said, that uh, during the first semester, second semester, they can choose another program. So, in that case, they won't be getting the visa for two years duration. No, so it will be still one year, and they can choose uh, when they are in Canada. Yes. Like so what or? happens is, yeah, what happens is the moment they confirm that the second year they are planning to study to the college and they reserve a seat. the immigration team will help them the college we have a different team which helps with the immigration they will help them to give a letter 
the letter has to be submitted to the visa officer and the extension letter is given so it's it's a very common uh, practice among the college and i don't see that till date any student has faced any issue with terms of visa extension exactly exactly and i always used to say that it uh, they should be very relaxed that uh, there won't be any problem with the visa rejection or anything something like that but students are still worried that if they go for one year program they will get one year one and half year visa or something like that it will finish very quickly so this is the thing they are they are telling always so but i would say that your students uh, sentinel has a very good program in the post grad level though it's a one year program but still you can choose so many programs they have uh, in business in some other uh, faculties also so and of course uh, some of our students they are doing something like that uh, that some students they are uh, always uh, they are knocking they have knocked us for the second program and only talk to bpin as well so this is how the students are extending their visa and they are extending their study permit so and after that they they, they may expect uh the three years of post study work permit so bipin uh, now we need to talk to talk about uh, the fees structure the um, so about centennial college and how uh, how should be the payment breakdown and uh, how you are how college is charging the fees is it uh, per semester or is it per year or how it's uh, uh, the fees breakdown so do you please say something about your fees and other other costs as well yeah so uh Uh, most of the program our our program one year it has two semester there are some program with one year three semester but for the programs with one year two semester fee structure is between 16 to 17 thousand dollar per year for the two semesters and the program with one year three semester it is around 25 to 26 thousand dollar now in terms of payment once you receive the offer letter we will give certain timeline like say 10 days for you to pay a deposit the initial deposit will be of 2650 dollars you uh, kenyan dollars once you pay the deposit there will be a deadline mention in the offer letter itself for you to make the rest of the payment that is in terms of a minimum of one semester should be paid before the last deadline to reserve your seat with the college the one semester fee what we expect is total of 8000 So, in case if you have paid the deposit of say two six five zero, another five thousand two fifty dollars should be paid before the extreme deadline. That's the college required. But what I have seen in past is, in case uh, the success rate of visa is much better if you pay a one year fees in total. I think Sayed can explain that. It all depends on how you apply. So, for the visa, it's always advisable to pay a one year fees in total. But then, from a college point of view, we need. One semester fee at least paid before the deadline. Exactly. Even I think I have some uh, some technical question over here uh, about the fees. Uh, the, you you have two uh, two fees you are taking in two sl slots. Like first payment is the few payments like two thousand six fifty and the re remaining part of the first semester. So suppose student gets uh, the offer letter. They they got the offer letter and uh, they paid the first payment, first slot of fees. And uh, if they don't apply for the visa. Uh, it is refundable or it is non-refundable. So, uh, in terms of refund policies, it's quite straightforward. So, yeah. mm -hmm. before the withdrawal deadline, so we will give you certain withdrawal deadline, and it is usually ten days after your class start date. That's a withdrawal deadline. Before the withdrawal deadline, if there is a visa rejection, then we refund the entire amount by deducting just two hundred dollar as an admin fees. however for any other reason if you withdraw before the last date then the deposit amount will be held that is 2650 so these are the two simple rules of the refund okay so 2650 if they are not uh, they did not apply for visa or they if they are not rejected then 2650 won't be refundable that is the thing yeah so yeah. this is how a student needs to consider because some students they are they they face some problem in For from some of the colleges as well. So this is two six five zero. Actually, is the confirmation seat confirmation fees. And if your visa is not, uh, you know, if you are not rejected, or if you didn't apply for visa, then definitely you can defer. Definitely you can defer, but you cannot get the refund if you are not rejected. So you need to keep in your mind this matter. So uh, Bipin, uh, though I know that the, your fees is not so high, sixteen thousand to seventeen thousand, but still students always look for some waiver, some scholarships, or something like that. If if it's one thousand also, uh, then they are always expecting something like this. So Centennial College, do you offer do you offer some waiver or bursary or anything in scholarships? 
students? So the fee, the fee what we charge it includes all the bursaries as well as the health insurance and the tuition fees. This is a part of the fee total fee. Now we do not offer any kind of waiver except that we never charge for application fees. So many colleges are charging application fees. We are not charging. That's one waiver. Apart from that, there are certain scholarship, but not at the entrance level. We believe that scholarship should scholarship should be given based on meritocracy, and the scholarship is usually rolled out. Like what kind of scholarships are available? Who can apply? What are the eligibility criteria? And that is only for the existing student. That means if you spend that one year with the college into your centennial account, you will see the weekly uh, uh, weekly newsletter. A email sent out. These are the scholarships. In fact, it has uh, it is also available in a website about the scholarship details. So, based on the available scholarships, students can apply, but it's purely based on your meritocracy. Okay, fine, fine. So, and now when you talk about the co-op, I think you are offering co-op in your diploma program and advanced diploma program. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure about your post grad diploma. So, if you could say something about your co-op options that you do offer in your diploma programs and also the graduate certificate program. You could say something okay. about this matter. Sure. Uh, most of a graduate certificate program doesn't have co-op, but it has certain placement options in it. You need you can check in our website about the placement option on certain programs, especially with the program which has one year, three semesters. However, all our advanced diploma program, I can say ninety five percent of them has a co-op option. So advanced diploma, I can I can say for at a post secondary level, it's a three year program. So if you are a good performer in the first three semesters. Then you uh, you can apply for a co-op, and we have a dedicated co-op team. There is a nominal fee to take the service from the co-op team, and the co-op team can help you to you know get your co-op work permit and also help you with the placement with the employer who are tied up with the college. So I I can just give you small hints that our placement team is tied up with more than 800 companies across Canada, and we have some great organizations which are connected with us. and we help you to get posted in those employer with those employers and you know the minimum wage you can expect during your internship is around 30 to 14 dollar and sometimes you get paid high and the benefit of co-op is as i mentioned earlier that uh, by the time you finish your program you can show in your resume that you already have a work experience in your in your in your knowledge and at the same time that is an advantage for any employer and also sometime when you are in your co-op the employer will hire you if they are really happy with you the moment you finish your program the same employer where you did the internship might hire you so these are some of the benefits so for the post secondary level after your third semester there are co-op option but we have fast track wherein after the first year that is if you are taking an advanced diploma that is your third and fourth semester because you are not doing your first and second semester in fast track you would directly enter into third semester so after your third and fourth semester you have an option if you are a good performer to apply for a co-op in the fifth and sixth semester Okay, that's great. That's great, and really, co-op helps students, uh, especially for the experience uh, that they can write in their CV that they are all they already have they already have the work experience, full-time work experience, and definitely the the network building. So the network will build up, so they can build up the networking as well with the companies, yeah. uh, which really help them uh, in future uh, work opportunities. So uh, between, uh, yes. So I sorry to interrupt. Just wanted to give one more information to the students. Now many questions comes from the students saying that, sir, after I finish my program, will I get any assistance from the college to get me through the job? Now we have a great career service uh, student service team, and it helps you with your career as well. Now just to give a small insight, every student after finishing their program in Centennial College can be linked with our college in terms of their career aspect for the coming five years. you have you will have access to the career link of centennial college like with all the partners who are you know linked with the college for your job aspect and the career service team will help you to prepare your resume to prepare with the basic questions of your interview rounds and then they will send you for the interview though but however remember that getting a job is shared responsibility college can only send you to the interview zone how you clear the interview depends on your skill sets Exactly, exactly, and I just need to clear something about the college matters and diploma matters because several times, uh, most of the times, uh, we are facing these issues that uh, they always say that students are saying always that uh, that they won't get visa uh, if they choose a diploma or if they choose a college or if they instead of masters if they choose a post grad diploma, or they are thinking that post grad diplomas are the lower uh, qualification, so maybe it won't be accepted for PR. 
positively or uh, maybe the employer or the companies they won't uh, uh, be very happy to accept them for their companies so so i would say uh, to the viewers since see uh, the educations are two kinds uh, two types in canada one is for the industrial uh, like practical education the professional learning another one is the theoretical learning or the you know research based learning so if you are thinking for uh, the industry based learning or the professional learning if you want to uh, if you want to uh, you know, play a vital role in the corporate world or the industry then definitely college programs are the best for you because since most of the programs are hands on experience based and also uh, you will be learning by doing so this is a very important thing because uh, uh, if you don't uh, if you don't have the practical knowledge of uh, of the field then you the company employer would not be taking you for the company because they need the you know that the people who knows the thing practically so it's very important so this the two factors are different if you are looking for a phd or a masters or if you want to be an academician academician or something like that if your target is different then definitely you can go for university uh, and you know that the, the few universities they do offer the professional program the course based masters which is very competitive and very tough to get admission over those universities so in that case colleges are the best options and public colleges uh, mostly they are designed they have been launched for the practical learning so uh, you should be very careful to write an sop and you should be very careful uh, for your other uh, documentation like sponsorship your finance and everything you should be very clear on that uh, i hope i believe that you just uh, focus on your sop it will help you to get visa i think uh, though it's not confirmed but still it is the most vital thing in your visa application the sop so don't uh, like don't be upset that college or diplomas or all these things just focus on your sop i think between uh, this is the way actually they should think what do you say because most of the time yes, we are facing issues yes sir i think uh, you uh, you hit the nail uh, just to give a small history about why college was introduced in canada so i'm sure students are looking who are looking to study in canada they know the population of canada it's almost 37 million it's very less compared compared to bangladesh or any other south asian country when canada is the second largest country in the world now uh, just to give a small insight over the history of why colleges were introduced around 1950s and 1960s there was huge employment options available but there were no skilled laborers no skilled employers employ uh, employees i can say that's when the government started thinking like if a student is taking 4 years to complete the bachelor's and then it's which is more of a theoretical aspect and then they find more difficulty when they get into the job to get adjusted to the working environment it will not give us the required skilled employees on time that's when the college you know shook hand with the education ministry i can say education team and they came up with the concept that we should come up with something little lesser duration of time for the students to complete and also to gain that industry experience which will help the students to get adjusted to the working environment the moment they finish the studies that's when the college concept was introduced around 1966 and i'm very proud to say that centennial was one of those first colleges which was introduced to have this experiment in place and in recent days what we have also noted in canada is students who are completing the masters in canada or phd's they are taking diploma level of program because they lack their hands on experience the, the job industry related studies and they are moving from masters after completing the masters they are taking one year of diploma so that they can get their hands on experience that's a trend so i think there should be no issues as long as your purpose to do this diploma is very clear and it is mentioned in your sop that should not be a problem in terms of visa also however there are other factors to consider exactly exactly and i also have some seen some videos of uh, like the company uh, the hr manager and the, from the canadian companies they always they are always saying that uh, if if they are looking for some person for the special sector or special section so they always they don't look for whether he has done the student sir has done have done some masters or bachelor or diploma they are looking for always the skills and the specialization they are always look for the specialization so diploma programs are really specialized for a different field a special topic so if you are, if you want to be master or specialized in a single topic then postgraduate diploma or the diplomas are the better options for you so bipin uh, finally we need to talk about the living expenses uh, in uh, that that you do offer the accommodation i think on campus accommodation off campus accommodation how do you offer the accommodation for the students for the international students and how is the average living expenses over there 
Sayed, so, uh, we do provide in-campus, off-campus accommodation. The in-campus accommodation can cost you from $900, $2,500, $2,000, depending on what you want to choose. And if you go to a website, you can see our in-campus accommodation is as good as a three-star property. You know, that's how the best quality we offer. At the same time, I can say living expenses for a student also depends on what are the choices, how they can, how, how they can adopt, for example, if I really want to cook on my own, my living expenses will reduce in terms of my food cost by 50%. If I don't know to cook, if I depend on the outside food every day, my expenses are going to be high. If I am ready to stay with a shared, uh, you know, teammate, uh, shared colleague, I can say shared students, the shared dormitory, my living cost will be like a rent can be below $500. But if I want to stay in a separate room, the living cash cost can be like in terms of rent can be $1,000. So I can say, depending on what kind of luxury you are preferring, the living cost can differ. However, from the government point of view, it is approximately estimated to be $10,000 per year. But that can always decrease or increase depending on the luxury you choose. Remember that if you're in Canada, this living cost can be supported with your part-time job, which is 20 hours per week permitted by the government. Okay, okay. And uh, as you know that when, during the, when students are arriving in Canada at this moment, so they need to have the 14 days quarantine plan. So is it possible to have this quarantine plan in the college campus, in the college accommodation, in the hostel? Uh, there, are di there are different cl clauses, uh, Sayyid. So depending if a student has chosen to stay in the campus, then there are certain quarantine plan which is offered by the college. But if a student is not staying in the campus, there are different quarantine plan which the college can offer. So that's why I said there are a lot of clauses, lots of details. Student can always write to sage at centennialcollege.ca to get all this information. In fact, this team will reach out to the students and guide them. What are the plans? What are the things they should be taking care of? What they should not be doing? What are the consequences of not following the quarantine plan? Everything is explained by this team. So we have a dedicated team to explain student in terms of the travel support. Okay, that's great. That's great. And now, finally, the application process. I can say on behalf of BP that application process is very simple. You need to contact the prominent consultant, and for the post grad uh, diploma or uh, or the you know that the diplomas, advanced diplomas, most of the cases we need your academic documents, transcript, certificate, passport, ILTS or PG or anything Duolingo. Then uh, sometimes we are looking for CV if you are having work experience, so different CV is required. And uh, there is no application fee, as we have said, the people have said, so there is no application fees. And uh, uh, once you submit all these documents, Prominent Consultant uh, will be uh, applying on behalf of you to Centennial College. And uh, that average offer letter uh, time, delivery time is uh, seven working days or maximum uh, 10 working days, something like that. So offer letter processing time is very fast for Centennial College. And uh, we are taking applications for fall 21 in, uh, for 2021, and this is the right time to approach uh, to approach. Because otherwise, if six are finished, then you won't be able to join September 21. So, we've been, we have covered most of the part of our session. And uh, if you have anything to say, like any final thing that you you, you want to include in this session. Yeah, I think that the most important aspect is many students are waiting for the offline you know uh, study like saying that i want to be a part of campus study now it is something which i have noted and i am guiding the student saying that remember that the only thing what survives is the one who can adopt to the change and the only thing which is constant is the change so things are changing you know you never know in future we may not have the campus uh, studies at all for the theoretical aspect because that might be the demand considering the pandemic situation but then if students are not able to adopt to the changes, then it might be very difficult and you will just leave, uh, give a lot of gap in terms of your education. So don't be hesitant. You can go through certain you know, Google search and understand how these online uh, classes are conducted. Online classes are conducted with a lot of quality assurance, a lot of support. So don't be hesitant in terms to take the online programs also. And remember, it's just temporary. As long as the pandemic situation Continue. The online classes is going to be there. The moment the pandemic situation is calmed down and there are less threatened to the life of an individual, you know, then we can start thinking of resuming the campus. So it's a temporary measure taken, but at the same time, students should be prepared to live with the changes and adopt to the changes. Great, great, great. And dear viewers, thank you, all. thank you uh, for your patience and for having a wonderful time with us for watching this live session. And this live session will be. 
posted in your timeline and also it will be published in our YouTube channel. So whenever you want uh, to know about the details of Centennial College, you can go through this video. And Pamela Consultant has been working uh, since uh, long uh, with Centennial College and we have recruited students as well to them. So definitely please feel free to come in with Pamela Consultant and uh, you must be, I, I can guarantee you that you, sh you must be have a, uh, having a comfortable journey with Pramil Consultant always. So Pippin, thank you so much for your all kind of thank support you. towards us all the time uh, because uh, you are the person I always get you over WhatsApp and uh, for any inquiry I get you immediately always. So then, sure, thank sure. you for, for your immediate support all the time and uh, we'll be hoping for the best and uh, for the best for 2021. Let's see. Uh, so thank you once again for joining. So we are going to close our live session right now. Thank you. Thank you so much dear viewers. Take care. Bye and stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ayat.